Hello everyone, welcome to my stuff on the Lawn Fawn Fans Spring YouTube Hop. I am so excited to show you what I've made for this hop. It's a little 3D veggie garden. I use the Rooting For You stamp set by Lawn Fawn and a whole bunch of other little things and I'm going to show you how I made it. As I mentioned, today's video is part of a hop with a group of amazing creative people. We all love Lawn Fawn and our theme was spring. So the link to the next hop will be in the description of this video and I'll try to include everyone's links because I don't want you to miss out on anyone's. They're all so beautiful. And this hop is being sponsored by scrapbookpal.com, which is awesome. So leave a comment down below in the comment section to go in the drawer and tell me where you're watching from. I'm going to jump right into it because there's a lot of steps to this. Even though there is a lot of steps, this was actually very easy and it all came together within about an hour. <laughs> so I've got my favourite Distress Inks for grass. I have Twisted Citron, Mowed Lawn and Lucky Clover. They're kind of the only greens that I actually own, so I kind of make them work. And even though they're kind of different shades of green, the wonderful thing about these inks is that they all blend so well together. Just got to kind of push them into each other a little bit. So I'm using the Twisted Citron and the Mowed Grass first. I'm just going back and forth with these, making up a nice kind of grassy green. It actually kind of looks like avocado, <laughs> this one. So I just go over it back and forth like I do with all of my ink blending. And this is going to be one of my layers of grass that goes around the bottom of my little plastic dome. Then for my other piece, it's going to be behind that first piece. So I wanted a little bit darker to make it look like it had a little bit of depth. So for that, I'm using the Lucky Clover and then using that Mode Lawn again. If you're wondering why I started straight onto ink blending and not onto stamping with this one, it's because I ordered this stamp set specifically for this project. I have always looked at the Rooting For You set and had no justification to buy it, even though it's adorable. But as soon as I was invited to join in on this top, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm buying it. And I was still waiting for it to arrive in the mail when I started this. Lucky for me, though, it arrived the same day, pretty much the same afternoon, maybe an hour after I started this project. It was so funny. Okay, so now I am finished with that grass. I have sprayed it just for a little bit of texture. I didn't dab it or anything because I didn't want to pull too much of that color off. And I cut it with one of Lawn Fawn's straight grassy dyes. Now, when I got to this point, I realized that because this is 3D and I want everything to kind of look like a scene from every angle, I had to do the back of these as well. Now, because this was the back of these pieces of card, I just did them very rough. It was mostly to make sure everything looked neat from every angle, but I wasn't too fussed on making these ones perfect. Now, I'm going to wrap it up and just see how much excess I have and see what it looks like inside the dome. And already, I'm already excited <laughs> about what it's going to look like in the end and it's time to move on to the next bit. So with this piece of white card, I did cut it on my Cricut. It was a little bit easier to get the exact measurement that I wanted, but you could totally do it if you had the right size dies. This piece that I'm cutting now is going to be the very bottom of my little jar. It's going to be the dirt that my little veggie garden is going to sit on. So I get out some of my brown distress inks and I start to blend them. I blended all of these and then wasn't very happy with how it turned out, so I actually went over it again after I do this bit to make it a bit more of a chocolatey brown. It looked too much of a, I don't know, a bit of a dull brown, but I went over it again. So that's why it looks a little bit different in the final photos. This is always a little bit exciting. I love using dyes in a bit of a different way and not using them for what they were originally intended for. So I've got this little pop-up die set that makes a little Christmas box for inside cards and I'm going to butcher it a little bit. Here I am just deciding what colour cardstock to use for these. I decided to go for cooler toned grey. I think it just worked a little bit better for this project. I cut these little pieces as well. These go inside the box and I, these are going to be dirt. So I covered them with some of my brown distress inks and just blended them till I got that chocolatey brown that I was after. Once I had finished blending these, I found my stitched hillside dies and I'm going to just trim the very edge of this just so it gives it a bit of a curve and looks like a little dirt mound rather than just a straight piece. And then I cut my grey cardstock into that little box and then I trimmed off all the pieces around the edge. All I needed from this was the side panels. With my scoreboard, I just used all the lines <laughs> and I just kept scoring my little pieces of card. This is going to be the sides of my veggie garden, so I wanted it to have that corrugated metal look to it.
once they were done, I just played around a little bit, making sure they all lined up, and then I glued them into place. The edges of these obviously didn't line up or stick together, but I have something planned to make it look a bit more seamless. While I could have scored the entire box piece, I decided to do this to give it a bit more stability and a bit more thickness, just so that it looked a bit more like a planter box and less like a thin little piece of cardboard. Once they were on, I then got some of my dark grey cardstock and as you can see I've used this for another project. I've mentioned many times I am a budget crafter so I keep all of my scraps because there's always something that I need them for and this was the perfect instance. This tiny skinny piece of cardstock was the perfect size piece for what I needed. And this is going to be the edging for my little veggie garden and down the sides as well. Using my school board again, I put a little crease down the middle of these just so that they are a bit easy to bend over the edges of my planter box just to make it look nice and neat. Once I had done this, I then started lining everything up. I cut off my excess and then it was time to stick everything on. Once they were glued down, I used my reverse tweezers to pin them down and let them dry. Once that was done, it was time to just rough this up a little bit. I didn't want it to look too neat. It's sitting in a pile of dirt, so it needed to look a little bit dirty. So I just used my Distress ink and a brush and just scuffed up the edges a little bit. I then started to play around with the scene and realized that my grass was a little bit too high. It was covering my box almost completely. So I took it to my paper trimmer and just trimmed it down a little bit both of them now that they're stuck together so that it was nice and even and then I was very happy with it it was the perfect height then my stamps arrived in the mail I was so excited <laughs> I ran out to the mailbox grabbed them as soon as my little notification on my phone said that my parcel had been delivered and then they were out of the packet within seconds <laughs> so here I am using them for the very first time so happy that I finally got them and have a wonderful excuse to use them. I started with the carrot and then I worked my way through the vegetables. You can see I made a few mistakes as I did this. I've never used stamps before that don't have that thick nice solid line around them so using these for the first time was a bit different because I, I just kept forgetting to leave space for the leaves on top when I was stamping them close to each other so that's why there's carrots off to the side and I think I do it with the turnip as well but anyway you got to learn these things the hard way right? So here I am stamping on the leaves and just loving these images. They are so, so cute. Lawn Fawn just make the cutest stamps ever. For the next little bit, I'm just going to be doing some stamping. For my little beets, I didn't have the perfect colour, so I made my own. I used some seedless preserves and some candied apple. I put them both on my craft mat, and with a little bit of water, I mixed them together. That's why these kind of look a little bit blotchy, a little bit watercolory. <laughs> um, they were, uh, yeah, quite wet when I stamped them, but I really like how they dried out, and I think it turned out to be a really good colour for the beets. So 
here are my little veggies all stamped out. It was then time to put those adorable little faces on. I used some black ink for these little winky and smiley faces. Moving on now to finishing off the little planter box, I mix some of my brown inks together with some water. These are my Distress Oxide inks and I soaked some little makeup remover rounds. It looks a little bit messy and a bit gross, but I did this a few times with a few of the pieces and they kind of look all mottled and, you know, weird patchy colours, but they turned out to be the perfect dirt for my little planter box. Here we are the next morning, everything was dry and I folded them up and slipped them between the little dirt mounds in my planter box. Um, some of them were a bit bigger than others, that's why I swapped them around so it filled out the gaps nicely. And although you don't really see these, it just made everything look a bit neater and so that if you were looking in this little dome from on top, it wouldn't look right down into the bottom of a grey box. It just kind of continued the design. A last minute addition to this that I did off camera was using the little birdies from this baby set as little crows. So here they are, I just thought they would look a little bit cute in here. For the final little decorative piece of this dome, I wanted some clouds for a sky. So I took a plain white circle and I trimmed it in half because I needed some even pieces for this. And then I used my stitch cloud die to cut along the bottom of that so that it looked like a cloud in the sky. I then glued these together so that when they went through my die cut machine they would stick together and the cloud dies would cut them both perfectly. Once they were done I then made sure that everything fit and that the clouds didn't go too far down the dome. I then stamped we're rooting for you on it. I thought that was a very cute sentiment for this one. And then I put a clear piece of acetate in the middle where I had left a bit without glue and I folded them in opposite directions so that this will stick to the very top of the dome and give this whole cloud a bit of support. With a little bit of tumbled glass distress oxide ink, I popped that on my mat, wet it down and I used a little bit of liquid stardust as well. And these were just going to be flipped all over my white cloud just to add a little bit of texture because it was looking very plain white in comparison to the other elements of this piece. It was then time to glue this to the very top of my dome. This glue didn't turn out as well as I had hoped, so I pulled it out, used some double sided tape and then used some of this glue around that as well, just to make it extra secure. I then left it upside down to dry. It was then time to play around again with all the placement and to see if everything was a good size to make sure the clouds weren't too low and that my veggies were perfect and staying in their place. I put those little crows in as well attached to the cloud. Now for my favourite part, putting it all together and seeing the whole thing come together to be one piece. I just used some craft glue to stick the dirt down. I used the same on the base of the veggie garden to stick that down on top of it. And for the grass, all I needed to do with that was trim off my excess, make sure that the edges overlapped just a little bit, and I glued them down together. While I'm putting this scene together, I thought that I would just remind you that this hop is sponsored by scrapbookpal.com and there is a voucher up for grabs and all you have to do to go in the running for that is comment below and tell me where you're watching from. That is open to US and Canadian viewers, but if you're an Aussie like me and you're tired of missing out on all the cool giveaways, make sure you comment below and if I get more than 10 Aussies comment on this, I will do a draw and whoever wins that, I will send you this dome. While we're on the topic of the hop, I will remind you that I have the link to the next stop in the description. Make sure you hop on over after this and check them out too. And if you've hopped over from another channel onto mine and you like what I've made, make sure you subscribe and stick around for more crazy things that I come up with. With my whole scene coming together, it was starting to look very cute from all angles. 
but the top looked a little bit icky. <laughs> you could see the glue and the double-sided tape on the very top of that acetate on top of the cloud. So I decided I wanted to stick something on the very top of the dome just to cover it up and do my best at hiding it. So I used my Little Flowers die set. I really haven't used this one very much, um, but I'm glad I've got it because it came in handy for this. So I cut the flowers that are the same design but in different sizes so that I could layer them. And using some candied apple and seedless preserves ink, I did a little bit of blending just to make it nice and colourful. I then layered the little flowers on the very top of the dome to cover up that double sided tape and glue. And that was the final step to making this adorable little garden scene in a dome. I hope you have loved this project as much as I love making it. I was so excited to be a part of my very first hop. I hope you hop along and enjoy the rest of the crafts that everyone has to share with you. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Bye.